Welcome to St. Matthew United Methodist Church, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. At St. Matthew, we are a Christ-centered family of grace where all are wanted. We are committed to becoming who Christ says we are, growing, living, and sharing God's love one relationship at a time. Please get prepared for worship as you listen to Wendy's Prelude. Please join me in our opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we are able to join together this morning. And we just thank you for this, this place, whether it's virtually or right here in this building that we are gathered together. And we just give you our morning. We give you our song. We give you our pastor's words and pray your blessings over all of it. And thank you so much for being the big and mighty God that we love and trust, and we know that you will take care of us. In your name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. this morning we want to make sure you know what's going on here for the rest of the week uh, first of all this Monday the tool shed men's group will be meeting and they meet over zoom so make sure you join them they have lots of fun we will also have of course brown bags and Bibles on Wednesday from 12 to 1 
Praise and Teaching from Reality, Saturday at 730, if you want to get on Facebook and see that. Uh, we do have some, some birthdays that we want to celebrate this week. Carmen Morrow's birthday is November 23rd, and Danny Jones' birthday is November 24th. Remember, if you are wanting to uh, give to the church an offering or to tithe, we do have a link where you can do that. Um, you can certainly mail something in, but uh, we do have this available for anybody who's not wanting to uh, do just those, the regular snail mail. Lots of fun tonight. We hope you will join us. You have gotten a link for our Feast of Fun. And tonight at 6 o'clock, just click on the link and you can join us. Whoever is there, we're going to have just a lot of fun sharing some Thanksgiving jokes, trivia, recipes, if you have a Thanksgiving prayer or a special memory that you want to share. If we can't be together and all feast together, we can at least be together and have a lot of fun together. So we do hope that you will join us for, for that tonight. Join me in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of inspiration this morning is number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
Now it's time for God's people in prayer. We'll spend a little bit of time when I will lift up some things in our community. Then we'll have some quiet time and end together with the Lord's Prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you now with some requests. We lift our church members, our local community, and our state and national leaders up to you. And we just pray that you would give them wisdom and pray that they will be good leaders for us. We just pray that as citizens of the United States, you will help us to be good citizens and to support the people in our community. And we especially lift up to you those around our church here, all of the apartments, especially Aspen Village and their tenants and their sweet manager and her family. And we lift up Wester Elementary to you. Just pray that you will just pour your special blessings on all the families that are associated with that church, the leadership that's a part of it, and all of the support staff. And we just thank you that, that we get to be a little bitty part of this community that's around us. And we just give you the rest of this day and thank you for being our God. In your name we pray. And we just lift up our personal requests up to you now. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church family. Welcome to St. Matthew United Methodist Church. I am so excited and glad that you were able to join us this morning. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are uh, still doing just online worship together, uh, only for the time being. And I would just ask uh, that you be in prayer for those who uh, are in our community and have been uh, touched by this virus, and also for our health care workers and uh, for, the, uh, for the many families and, uh, that have been touched, and also for our families uh, that are n navigating and negotiating uh, what they're going to do for uh, Thanksgiving this year, how they're going to do Thanksgiving this year. So let's just pause for a moment and just, just take some time to, uh, uh, to pray and reach out to our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Father, we do uh, so much thank you that we are not alone during this time, God. And Lord, uh, we do come to pray for those in our church family and those in our community um, uh, who are sick, Father, and we lift them up to you uh, right now, Father. We pray that your healing hand be upon them, Lord, that you be with them and their families and all that surround and take care of them. Uh, keep them safe, Father. And Lord, uh, we also ask uh, uh, that you just, just lord over us during Thanksgiving as well. Uh, Father, for many of us, Lord, it's just going to look a lot different. But Father, we know that this is only a season, God. It has a beginning, and it has a middle, and it has an end to it, Father. And so we thank you that we are not alone during this time, Father. And we also uh, uh, pray that, Lord, that we would remain faithful uh, to you, Lord, during this time as well, God. So, Father, uh, help us where we need help. Lord, touch us, Father, where we need your presence, God. Uh, Lord, we love you very much, and we are so very thankful and grateful for all that you have done for us, that you are doing now, and that you will do in our future, God. We love you. It's in your name that we pray. The power of your Holy Spirit be upon us, flood this sanctuary, flood all the homes and the offices and the cars, Lord, of, of where the people are that are viewing this right now. Lord, uh, we just lift that up to you, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 
Well, our scripture comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, and I'm reading from the NIV today. It says, Rejoice always and pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, as you know, last week we ended our series, Escape Your Fate, with this really encouraging message of God's hope from his holy word, showcasing his promises that he made to us found in Romans 8, 28, where he told us that he is working in all things for our good to those who love him. And it goes on to say that it's because that we love him that we are called according to his purpose. So if you've not had a a chance to catch uh, that message, let me just encourage you to do so. It's it's right here on our Facebook page in our video section. And it really truly is another example of how richly and deeply God loves and cares for us. Guys, as you're well aware, this Thanksgiving and Christmas season is really shaping up to be more different and more challenging than any of us uh, would or could have ever imagined at the beginning of this year. Uh, With the pandemic spiking in our community now, families are grieving and loved ones are trying to keep loved ones safe. Our health care workers are absolutely exhausted. And everyone is just trying to make sense of what is happening and how they can help. So in all of that, plus even more, I want to encourage you to be safe. And I really want to encourage you to be prayerful. All knowing that we love you and God loves and cares for you so very much more than we ever could. We're not alone. God is with us. You know, it would be easy for us to focus on all that we may be missing out on or are unable to do together as family and extended family during this time. For many of us, Thanksgiving is such a great moment of reunion and fellowship and community. And with those who, you know, we do not see, as often as we wish. And you know, for those of us that have lost loved ones over the last year, Thanksgiving can be a time of comfort and love found in the family and friends gathered around us as we share our memories of those loved ones who have gone before us. But you know, this year, this year for many of us, this Thanksgiving really will be very different So, though you may not be able to gather as you did or normally do, uh, let me encourage you and speak this truth straight to your soul right now. Thanksgiving was never meant to be about what we didn't have. Giving thanks to God is always centered on the other, that which we do have. Be it the beautiful memories of past loved ones or phone calls or Zoom calls or emails with those unable to attend this year, those things now even more precious than before are true gifts given to us. Though our living rooms and our kitchens and tables may be a bit emptier this coming Thursday, our hearts are full of the blessings that we've really always received from him, but perhaps took for granted up until this time. So let's focus on what we have and thank God for what we have in him and what he has given us in each other, whether we're able to physically be together or not. Listen, God has given you the greatest blessing of all the blessing to be a blessing to other people. So you know what? You are the blessing. You truly are the blessing. And I thank God for you today. So if you have your Bibles with us, go ahead and turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we're really going to be looking at this 
one question this morning. What's God's will for my life? What's God's will for my life? Now, I'm about to ask you that same question three different ways to help us uh, really understand the question that I'm trying to communicate today. What's God's will for my life? Or another way to ask that is, what's God's heart for my life? Or even another way to ask that same question is, what's God's purpose for my life? Now, we don't always ask this question, what's God's will for my life, in such a broad sense? Usually this question presents itself in more specific terms, like, should I take the new job, or should we move to this city, or go to this school, or make this investment? You know, there are all kinds of ways, too, that we try to figure it out. We may try the fortune cookie approach, you know, thinking that God is is speaking to us through some fortune cookie at a restaurant. Or we may try the magic eight ball approach where, you know, we ask the question and then we shake it and then we get the answer. (laughs) Or if you're like me, you keep shaking it until you finally get the answer that you want. (laughs) And I guess given this age of technology, I guess we could ask Google or Alexa or Siri. Whatever it is, the question really still remains. How do you find out what God's will is for your life? Well, look, it's real simple because in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we are given exactly that answer. Listen as I read again, beginning in verse 16. Rejoice always and pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So, what's God's will for our life? Rejoice always. Pray continually. And give thanks in all circumstances. Had to check to be sure my mic was still on. (laughs) So, no matter who you are, or where you go, or what you do, His will remains the same for you. Rejoice, pray, and be thankful. See, as we look at Scripture, we really see often that God is more concerned about who we are on this journey rather than the actual destination. And you know what? That's often hard for us to wrap our minds around because we are such destination-driven people. Our emphasis seems more on, God, where do you want me to go? Or, God, what path do you want me to take? While God seems really to be more focused, though, on our hearts and who we are along the way or when we're on that path. And it's along the way. It really is. It's along uh, whatever path that, He leads us down that his will for us is to rejoice always and pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. Now, look, in these three verses, there's a lot that we can gain about being joyful and being prayerful. But today, since we're already kind of in this Thanksgiving mindset, I want to talk about being thankful. And to do that, we're going to camp out on this one phrase and focus on each of its five words, give thanks in all circumstances. Now, the first couple of words we come to in this phrase is give thanks. Give thanks in all circumstances. The word give here really indicates that Thanks will cost us something. And you know what? It does. Thanks requires us to be intentional. And thanks requires us to be deliberate. You know, sometimes we see people who seem to be so thankful and so appreciative and grateful. 
and optimistic and positive all the time. It just seems to be their nature. Do you know anyone like that? I've got a couple of friends like that. And, you know, when we think about them, we think, you know, that that's just really who they are. And we may even say about ourselves, perhaps, good for them. <laughs> but, you know what, I'm not wired that way. So we have this way, really, of dismissing gratitude and thanksgiving as you either got it or you don't type of deal. But look, guys, what we find in Scripture is that contentment and thanksgiving really is a learned kind of thing that doesn't come to any of us really naturally. It's something that we're taught. Now, parents, you understand this, right? As your children grew, uh, perhaps the two phrases that you were super intentional about your kids learning were, <laughs> please and thank you. Some, some parents are so intentional that their kids learn these concepts that they actually begin teaching them by way of baby sign language well before their children can ever shape their own words. They teach uh, their little ones to sign such words as please, thank you, and of course the word more. <laughs> so do these with me, please, thank you, and more. <laughs> now, all that's just incredible to me <laughs> because uh, to think that these little ones, before they can even speak, can figure that out and grasp what this means. I mean, they actually really do get it. But you know, of all those signed words that we just went through, the only one I guess that you would really need as a child would be this one, more. And man, haven't we become fluent in that today? As we got older, it would seem like our hearts are always just doing this, right? We're always saying more, more, more. It, it never really changed for a lot of us, perhaps. In fact, that one word even tends to mark our prayers when we talk to God, God, more, God, more. So we may discover today that we are really good at doing this, right? But maybe not so great at saying this. We are great at saying more, but perhaps we're not so great at saying thank you. Why? Well, I think one of the reasons is, and maybe the biggest reason is, because more focuses on what we get, and thank you focuses on what we give. Even in the implied construction of the word thanksgiving, we sometimes miss seeing its meaning. We miss that thanksgiving isn't thanksgiving until thanks is given. And see, thanks is something that we do give. It's something that is super intentional, and it's something that we learn if we are teachable. And you know what? Also, giving thanks is super good for you, too. The National Institute of Health researchers did this study that showed that subjects who showed more gratitude had higher levels of activity in the hypothalamus region of their brain. Now, why is that important? Well, that's important because the hypothalamus controls things such as our stress levels and sleep function and even our metabolism. <laughs> in effect, <laughs> you can jumpstart your metabolism in the morning by starting your day with the spirit of thanksgiving and gratitude. It's biology. And you know what? It's how God designed us. Now, that's funny because, in a way, 
the same calories that you're going to consume this coming Thursday over Thanksgiving can actually be burnt by being thankful. And you know what? Giving thanks is great for us relationally as well. Studies show that expressing thanks and encouragement to others is the most effective way to influence future behavior. So, let's say people who are thanked for giving directions, guess what they do? They do so even more willingly in the future because they were thanked. Social workers who get thank you letters from their clients, guess what? They are more likely to visit clients in the future. And you know what? Restaurant servers who actually write thank you on the check are more likely to get a bigger tip than those who don't. Husbands who get a thank you for washing the dishes are more likely to wash the dishes the next time. (laughs) Well, okay, did I go too far with that one? I mean, it really is actually part of the research. I'm really not making that up. Okay, we'll move on. Mothers who are appreciated and thanked for fixing meals do so, do so more frequently in the future. So when we give thanks to people that we share life with, we are making, we are making an investment, and that investment often comes back to us again and again. Do you remember the old... Emmons and McCullough study that uh, we talked about, man, several, several months ago. It was in uh, Psychology Today. You know, they separated their volunteers into two different groups. And the participants in one group were told to keep a, a gratitude journal or a Thanksgiving journal where they were to pay attention and list daily everything that they were thankful for. And then the other group, where the other group was instructed to keep an annoyance journal where they were to write down everything that annoyed them throughout the course of the day. Now, what they found from the study was incredible. They found those who kept the gratitude or Thanksgiving journals had markedly greater increases of energy and enthusiasm. They even slept better and they were significantly less depressed. Now, the other interesting thing that they discovered from both groups was whatever either group did intentionally, that group soon found themselves doing it unintentionally or subconsciously, as you, if you will, throughout the day. So when the journals were stopped and the study was over, those who had kept the Thanksgiving journal found themselves living more consistently in the mindset of thanksgiving and gratitude. Conversely, those who had kept the annoyance journal found that after the study was over, they were more irritable and were more likely to complain and be critical. Hence this truth, whatever we do, we find ourselves doing more of. Whatever we do, we find ourselves doing more of. And that truly sets the focus of the lens that we see our world through. So, if you're being thankful, you're more likely to be more thankful. And if you're being critical, you're more likely to be more critical. And that sets the way by which you see yourself, you see your circumstances, and you see others in your world. So give thanks, guys. The next two words that I want to focus on from the Scripture is all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances. Now, here's where this gets difficult, right? (laughs) Many of us think that our thanksgiving is dependent on our circumstances. And if our circumstances were somehow better, that would unlock the key to our ability to give thanks. In other words, 
It's the mentality that I'd be thankful if this happened. Or I'd be more thankful if that happened. If I have more, remember? If I have more money, or if I have more security, or if I have more love, or if I have more, you fill in the blank. If I have more, then I'll be thankful. When I lived in Haiti, we spent the day with these kids from Christian Evangelique Mission who had been found on the streets of City Soleil, which is the poorest slum in Port-au-Prince. Now look, these weren't just poor kids, guys. They were kids who had been abandoned and had been orphaned. They had nobody, and they literally had nothing. In fact, the soccer ball that they were playing with that day was made of old, balled-up clothing rolled together and bound by a rope. So we played with them that day, and we fed them that day, and, and we had worship with them. And, and after the time of worship, we handed out these little bitty cookies and some watered-down tang, right? Now, the pastor helping these kids, he came up to me, and he told me just how special those cookies and the tang was for them. In fact, he said that they might get something like that maybe at Christmas. Maybe. When the kids had finished their cookies and their watered-down tang, they, they started coming back up for what I thought would be asking for more. But that wasn't the case. Instead, they were returning their cups so that those in the back who had not received anything could have some watered-down orange drink. It was only then that I realized we didn't have enough cups. We did not have enough cups. And that the kids that had just had their snacks were bringing their cups back so that other kids who did not get anything could have some. Guys, I just want to tell you this. It was amazing to me how gracious and how thankful these kids were. The kids who had nothing, how, how just absolutely amazed and gracious they were for what they had received. And, and I remember thinking at that time, man... Had it been me and my crew back in La Mesa at their age, you know what we would have done? We would have probably said, there's no ice. Hey, man, where's the ice? Or why did he or why did she get more orange drink than I did? And you know what? We, we would have drunk up as quickly as possible and eaten those cookies as quickly as possible just to rush back in line to get more. Well, you know what? For a lot of us, our cookies just became something else and got a lot more expensive too. I mean, we compare ourselves to others and it often doesn't seem fair. And, and whatever we get feels like we deserve a little bit more. And we want to make sure we're the first ones in line, right? Because what if we miss out? You know, in Haiti, you know, they got it. We missed it. We missed it because we thought that our circumstances were more abundant. You know, we missed it because we thought that our, if our circumstances were more abundant or were more comfortable, then we would be more thankful. But look, guys, here is the real deal. Unless we are super intentional, abundance can become the enemy of gratitude. And it can lead us to discontentment and to entitlement and to complaining. So what do we do? I mean, you know, the Bible tells us something very different. The Bible tells us to give thanks in all circumstances, not some circumstances, 
not convenient circumstances, not easy circumstances, but in all circumstances. So what do we do? Well, we have to be intentional, guys. We must be intentional to be thankful in all circumstances. That in every situation, we learn to look at life through this lens of gratitude and thanksgiving. Look, those orphans got it, man. They were intentional about giving thanks for what they had received by looking out for others who had less than they did. You know, in preparing this, I was reading some ways that the Bible practically gives us to express thanks. Uh, and one of the things that the Bible says is that the Bible says that we can give thanks through singing. I know some of you think, you know what, I'm not a great singer. It doesn't really matter, you know. It's the heart of worship, of what you're singing, and that you're singing it that counts. Psalms 147.7 says it this way. Sing out your thanks to him and sing praises to God. Listen, you want to say thanks to God? Man, a great way to do that is to sing. Because when we worship God in song, guys, something happens to our hearts. The tone of our hearts begins to match the tone of our voice. We start to feel even more thankful. You know, one of the things that I have learned about worship, and let me know if this is true for you as well, is the less that I feel like doing it, the more I probably need to do it. Another way that we can express thanks is by serving. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 28, it says, Let us please God by serving him with thankful hearts. And so, see, when we serve him, it's a way of expressing our thanks. When we give our cup to someone who needs some watered-down tang, what we really are doing is we're really giving thanks so we've looked at give thanks, and we've looked at all circumstances, but I'm missing something, aren't I? <laughs> Our last word I want us to look at in this morning is uh, the shortest in this entire scripture, but perhaps it's the most important, and it's the word in. Give thanks in all circumstances. Man, that short little preposition right there makes all the difference in the world in the meaning of this verse because when we talk about thanksgiving, guess what? We almost always use a different preposition than in. Can you guess which one I'm talking about? For. We almost always talk about being thankful for. Now, look, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. <laughs> It's good, and it is really right to be thankful for things. But look, as you're making your list of what you're thankful for, you'll really find it's a little harder to be thankful in. Be thankful in all things. Now look, the Bible doesn't say to be thankful for all things. You know, not only would that be impossible, but it almost seems like it would be a bit sadistic too. Because look, there are many heartbreaking and terrible things going on in this world that we shouldn't be thankful for. That we shouldn't say, thank you for them. But you know what we can say? We can say, thank you in them well how how are we supposed to do that well i jotted a few more things down here the first is i can be thankful in all things because god has a greater purpose than i can see god has a greater purpose than i can see 
He has a greater purpose than I can see in the current situation. And since he knows what I don't, and God understands where I can't, I can be thankful in all things, given that my perspective is so limited, but his perspective is so eternal. Now look, here's how this conveniently ties together for us from last week. Remember, we looked at Romans 8, 28, in all things, right, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Now look, that helps us too with giving thanks. We can give thanks in all things. Same language, because we know God is working in all things for our good. Let me say it again. We can give thanks in all things because we know God is working in all things for our good. Secondly, I can give thanks in all circumstances because God can work in me so that I can really grow. In all things, God can make me more like Jesus. Now, this is a truly consistent theme throughout Scripture where we can be grateful for certain challenges because in those challenges, our faith is grown, it is seasoned, it is matured, and our relationship with God is deepened because of it. We come out on the other side looking more like Jesus. And another reason that we can be thankful in all things is because God's going to give me the power so that I can overcome one way or the other. No matter what I'm going through, I never go through it alone. No matter what you're going through with God, you'll never go through it alone. There is this peace that they talk about, the peace that passes understanding. And you know what? Some of you truly know this too well. You've gone through something horrific, some thing that was absolutely horrible, and, and you would never want to go through that again, and you would never be thankful for that at all. But you know what? You weren't thankful for it, but you learned to be thankful in it. And because of that, God's power and strength brought you through being thankful in it. And the last one is this. This is a biggie. <laughs> we can be thankful in all circumstances because of what God has already done for us. Man, he gave his son so that we could live. Now look, I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. And he owed me nothing. And look at what he did. If he never does, if he never does another thing for me for the rest of my life here on this earth until I see him, he has still done way more than I ever deserved. Amazing grace. Amen? Amazing grace. One of my favorite Thanksgiving stories comes from the story of a worship service in a leper colony. There was a lady missionary on stage that day playing her guitar, and so she asked this lepers, the lepers in this colony if they had any songs that, that they would like to request and sing. And there was this one woman in the very, very back who raised her fingerless hand, and her nose was gone, and her, her lips were gone, and her speech was slurred. And so the worship leader saw her hand and, and asked the lady, what is it that you would like to sing, Mel? And the lady said, can we sing Count Your Many Blessings? What in the world, guys, gives someone the ability 
to be so thankful in those circumstances? Well, let me tell you, it's Jesus. It truly is Jesus. Guys, when he is all that you've got, that is truly more than you'll ever need. So look, you know, we don't measure our thanksgiving by what we are missing. We measure our thanksgiving by who we have. Guys, I really hope that you have a great, wonderful Thanksgiving. And I want you to remember this. It's not Thanksgiving unless thanks is given. So glad having you with us today. Happy Thanksgiving. Let me pray for us. God, we thank you so much, Lord, that you so loved us, Lord, that you so loved this world, that you gave your only son, and that if we would just believe in him, Lord, we wouldn't perish, but we would live and have eternal life, God. You know, Lord, Father, if nothing good ever happens to us again, that one thing right there, Lord, it fills our hearts, and they overflow with gratitude. So, God, would you teach us even more this week to look at this life through the lens of thanksgiving, God? Lord, uh, some of us, you know, we really need help with this, Father. We, we've lost perspective. These are tough times, God. We've lost sight, Lord, maybe of your goodness. You know, a lot of us maybe are constantly, Lord, wanting, wanting more. Let me just ask you today, would you just teach us this entire week to say thank you, to say thank you instead? God, we love you, and we do thank you for your grace, Father. And we thank you for second and third and fourth and fifth and so on chances, God. We thank you, God, that you do redeem, Father, and you do heal, and that we are not alone. And we thank you that you are working in all things for our good. And because of that, then, Lord, in all things, Father, we can be thankful. We can truly give you thanks. We love you, Lord. Help us have more thankful hearts. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. behind your regrets and mistakes come the day there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness 
was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Savior, isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before Him. is risen oh what a savior isn't he wonderful sing hallelujah christ is risen bow down before him for he is lord Christ is risen, oh what a Savior, isn't he wonderful, sing hallelujah, Christ is risen, bow down before him, for he is Lord of all, sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bowed with. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate that you spent some time with us. And we just pray special blessings on your week. Please go to our Facebook site, our YouTube channel, and you can see more uh, sermons and all kinds of things that we have on there. We would love for you to join us in that way. And as you go out this week, please remember Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Blessings this week.